So every school day for 10 days, I'm giving you something you could do to kickstart your students' sense of numbers and increase their fluency with mathematics. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Over these two weeks of the kickstart, I'm giving you an action step every day that you can take towards building your students' number sense and increasing their fluency with mathematics. Remember, this does not mean that your students will magically have number sense and fluency by the end of our two weeks, but we will have kickstarted it and you'll have a roadmap to keep building it throughout this school year. This is day five of the kickstart. To ensure that you are kickstarting your students' number sense, make sure you've got the number sense kickstart checklist. This is the checklist of the 10 things you can do to kickstart number sense this year. If you have already signed up for the kickstart, you should have gotten an email with it. If you haven't, sign up over at buildmathminds.com slash 10 day dash kickstart, and I'll send it over along with the link to the resources page where I'm putting all the resources I mention every day of the kickstart. Let's dig in to day five. So we have been talking about mathematics, but I want you to think about reading for a moment. In reading, we really encourage kids to create a visual image of what they're reading. That's like a sign of a good reader. They're able to comprehend what they're reading and use it to create that story in their mind. But in mathematics, kids are often pushed into the symbols way too quickly. As we talked about in day two of this kickstart, if you were to ask like a random person, not an elementary school teacher, to just close their eyes and picture nine, most likely the image that they have in their mind is just the digit nine. They don't have an actual image of the quantity of nine things. But if you ask that same person to close their eyes and picture ball, they actually have an image of a ball and not just B-A-L-L. In fact, they probably could conjure up multiple visuals of a ball. They don't just have one visual. Visuals are essential to helping students really understand what numbers mean and what it means to then add, subtract, multiply, and divide with those numbers. We talked a bit about why they are so important back in day two of the kickstart, but today I wanna talk about how to use them. So today's tip is to add in visuals to tomorrow's lesson that will help students make sense of the mathematics. To help you do that, I've got two resources. Now remember, all the resources are linked up on the Kickstart page, which was emailed to you if you registered. If you aren't registered, go to buildmathminds.com slash one zero day dash kickstart to get it emailed to you. And if you have any issues with emails not getting to you, please just email us at info at buildmathminds.com so that we can ensure you get everything you need to kickstart number sense this year. Okay, your first resource is a decision tree. With all the items that I try to explain on here, it's best to see it for yourself, but I'll try my best to describe it so you can be thinking about these things in regards to your lesson for tomorrow. The decision tree is for you to figure out how to use visuals or pictures in appropriate ways in math lessons. At the top of the decision tree, it says, does the lesson have visuals slash pictures? If no, then it goes down towards the bottom and tells you to create some. If yes, the next decision point asks, are the pictures helpful with the mathematics of the problem? So what do I mean by helpful with the mathematics? The example I show in the decision tree is showing subtraction problems that are arranged vertically inside ice cream cones. While that's a cute visual, it, has, it is not helpful with solving the actual mathematics of the problem. So I also have a visual next to the yes part of that decision, which shows addition problems with quantities inside a 10 frame. 
Now, quantities inside of a 10 frame aid students in solving the mathematics of those problems. So if the answer to this decision point was a no, then you need to go down towards the bottom where it tells you create some. <laughs> if the answer was yes, the next decision point asked, does the lesson dictate how students are supposed to use the visuals? So I show some visuals with those addition problems in the 10 frames again. The example that's next to the no shows the directions to the problem just says, find the sum. No wording about how they're supposed to do that. So if your lesson is like that, then you're good to go. Give the students the problems and let them use their knowledge along with those visuals to figure out a solution path. The other example that's next to the yes shows those same 10 frame problems, but it says, find the sum by making a 10. This lesson does dictate how students are supposed to use those visuals. So if that's the case, the advice I give in the decision tree is to delete any mention of using the visuals in a certain way and then give the students the problems and let them use their knowledge along with the visuals to figure out a solution path. I don't think you will need this decision tree for long because after you use it a few times to evaluate your lessons, you'll be able to do it quickly with just a glance at your lesson. But use the link that's in your email to go to the resources page for the 10 day kickstart, download this visual of the decision tree because it's pretty. <laughs> And it's a whole lot easier to understand than me talking you through it. Okay, the second resource I want to give you is to help you create the visuals. And the resource is a Google slide document that has some of my favorite visuals. Now, it's just the base visuals. I don't have them arranged to create like all the different quantities that you could possibly use, but it gives you a base to start with. And then you can just copy and paste each item to create the different quantities that you might need. For those of you who have taken the flexibility course that I have that's all about the eight number sense concepts and how to help kids build them, you've got a much bigger version of this Google slide document. And there's different ones for those of you in the K2 course and the 3.5 course. So you don't need to download this one because it's more of a general one with examples for all grades. But if you have not taken my course, I still wanted you to have a place to get started with creating visuals because I don't want that part to hinder you at all. And here's one point I really wanna hit home before we end this. Your visuals do not need to be fancy pictures. In fact, in Douglas Clement's article about subitizing, which I'll link up, but you have to be an NCTM member to access, he lays out some guidelines about subitizing images, but I think they're important for all images that you're gonna create. So on page 403, he says, initially, groups to be subitized should follow these guidelines. A, groups should not be embedded in pictorial context. S B, simple forms such as homogeneous groups of circles or squares, rather than pictures of animals or mixtures of any shapes should be used for the units. C, regular arrangements should be emphasized and most should include symmetry with linear arrangements for preschoolers and rectangular arrangements for older students being easiest. And D, good figure ground contrast should be used. So keep it simple. That's what he's saying. All you need are circles and squares and they should not be surrounded by other scenery or embedded pictures. Start with regular arrangements like dice patterns and ones with symmetry, and then make sure you have good contrast between the, sh the color of the shapes and the background. That's it. Circles, squares, nice arrangement, contrasting color to the background. That's all you need. So again, day five tip is to add in visuals to tomorrow's lesson that will help students actually make sense of the mathematics. Not just pretty pictures, folks. We want visuals that help them make sense of the mathematics. Remember, if you have not officially joined us yet for this 10 day number sense kickstart, go to buildmathminds.com slash 10 day dash kickstart to sign up. I'll email you the checklist and the link to the resources page where you will find the Google slides that I referenced in this episode along with that decision tree. So make sure you are signed up because this is just day five and we've got nine other days of tips to help you start the year off with a solid mathematical foundation for your students. 
That's all for day five, and I will see you back here tomorrow for day six.